I want to thank Bishop Murray for our invocation. Bishop Murray, thank you so much. Let's give Bishop Murray a round of applause. So I want to welcome you all today. I want to start by acknowledging all the elected officials that come out today to be with us this morning, all of our elected officials. I see we have Councilmember Jack Christie. We have Councilmember Mike Knox. We have Councilmember Brenda Stardet. We have State Representative Alma Allen, your State Representative. We have State Representative Ron Reynolds, your State Representative. We have Constable Gary Majors. And we have representatives from May Walker's office. I know we had a couple of representatives from May Walker's office here as well. In the, there we are. There we go. Oh, that's right. And of course, a uh, representative from State Senator Boris, Boris Miles' office is here with us as well. Thank you all for being here. I also want to uh, acknowledge the various boards and super neighborhood councils within District K. And when I call your organization's name, could you please stand? Uh, the Five Corners Management District, uh, the Braze Oaks Management District, the Harris County Improvement District Number 12, Buffalo Point, the Stadium Park Management District Redevelopment Authority, TERS 9, TERS 25, Bracewood Super Neighborhood Council, Near Southwest Super Neighborhood Council, Westbury Super Neighborhood Council, Braze Oaks Super Neighborhood Council, and Southwest Houston 2000. Central Southwest Super Neighborhood Council and South Houston Concerned Citizens Coalition, Fort Bend Houston Super Neighborhood Council, Hiram Clark HPD Storefront Association, Westbury HPD Storefront Association. Y'all, let's give all of our community partners a round of applause. And finally, I'm going to thank the HPD command staff here at the Southwest Substation for working alongside our District K office to put this event together. Let's give it up for the HPD Southwest Substation command staff for always working with us. And so for decades, the Southwest HPD Substation has serviced Police Beat 15, which consists of Myerland, South Braisewood, Reliant Park areas. Beat 16, which consists of Hiram Clark and Fort Bend areas, and Beat 17, which encompasses the Gulfton and Braze Oaks area. With the construction of the new South Gessner Division over six years ago, Beat 17 was removed from the Southwest Division area of responsibility, leaving Beats 15 and 16 as part of the current Southwest substation. This placed the former patrol station that was located on Beach Nut, Council Member, Mayor Pro Tem Cohen, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, which was recently flooded and destroyed by Hurricane Harvey at the far northern edge of patrol areas. The relocation of the former HPD facility to this new location will strategically place the substation at the center of Beats 15 and 16. This will provide greater accessibility for all constituents within Beats 15 and 16, plus the new location will have a positive impact on police response time. This morning, we will hear from our mayor, followed by Chief Art Arsa Baylor, who will, also, um, who will also highlight the importance of this new uh, relocated HPD facility within the Southwest Patrol Division, and then Executive uh, Assistant Chief Troy Fenner. But before I bring up the mayor to provide us with opening remarks, I want to acknowledge the best, okay, and I say the best HPD team in District K that makes up the Southwest P Patrol Division. Assistant Chief Wendy Bainbridge, if you would please stand. <laughs> Captain Belinda Nall, <laughs> Lieutenant Julie Manfrey, Sergeant Mike Ortiz, Pine Park Storefront DRT, Westbury Storefront DRT. And we also have a few HPD command staff that was with us during the initial groundbreaking ceremony two years ago and are still a part of the District K family. Captain Christine Anthony, <laughs> Captain Tad Pando, and now Texas Southern University Police Chief Mary Young. Let's give all of these first responders a round of applause. And prior, so prior to the groundbreaking event, that, uh, let's go ahead on. Yeah, okay, prior to the groundbreaking event that occurred two years ago, I came into public office advocating for the relocation of the Southwest Patrol substation centrally to provide the, uh, to provide centrally to serve the entire areas B15 and 16. As you know, the former Beach Lot location was small. It was cramped for its current officers 
and not so centrally located to better patrol the beats. Through sheer perseverance, we were able to get uh, Mayor Parker, and I want to give Mayor Parker a round of applause. She was able to put it on the ballot to combine the bond funding for HPD. And uh, at that time, Chief McClellan, and I think Chief McClellan is here. There he is. Let's give Chief McClellan a round of applause for putting it on the books and sticking to it and making sure that we were able to get this, this uh, project moving. Uh, Chief Slinkard also, we appreciate you in those back rooms while we're yelling and screaming trying to get this thing done. But let me tell you, HPD was with us all the way. Uh, they needed the facility. It made no sense for our officers to be in the type of situation they were in uh, over there off Beach Nut, and here we are today. So I want to thank Manhattan Construction and the General Services Department, the Parks Department, project managers for delivering a superb building and park with their design within the designated uh, time frame. And Chief Acevedo will acknowledge the construction team architects selected for the CIP. Also, as you can see around us, the park needed a facelift. Where's my Cambridge Village people? Ooh. My Ramblewood people. Ooh. That's right. Keswick. That's right. Where's Keswick? Okay. Y'all know we needed a new park. So with the construction of the new HPD substation, park improvements were slated for Cambridge Village Park, which resulted in a new playground, benches, trash cans, and extension of the current walking trail to enlarge park and the new large parking lot that will serve both the park and the police substation. <laughs> This is truly a mirror of projects, partnerships of HPD, general services, and the Parks Department. And so this part, this project could have stalled, but two years ago, almost two years ago, when this mayor came into office, uh, he made sure that he said that public safety was a priority and made sure that this part, this project stayed on time, make sure that HPD and general services had everything they need, needed to make sure the project would move forward. And I just want to thank Mayor Turner and his staff for working with us to make this day possible. This, this would not have been possible but for the work of our mayor. So at this time, I'd like to bring up the best mayor in the land, the best mayor in the world, our mayor, Sylvester Turner. I wish I had my telephone so I could have recorded those <laughs> last few statements. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, let me, let me certainly acknowledge the best city council person District K has ever had, and that's Larry Green. Look, I, I will say to you, and I think you already know, the residents and now District K, that Council Member Larry Green is very dutiful, focuses on detail, and very capable and competent of getting things done. And so uh, the, that's the, our presence here today is a testament to that, a project that started six years ago. And now we are out here today uh, witnessing uh, uh, its opening. So I do want to commend Councilmember Larry Green. And I, yes. And to demonstrate just how important uh, this Southwest uh, Command Station is, not just to District K, but to all of us. You have council members here, Council Member Knox at large, Council Member Jack Christie at large, Council uh, Member Brenda Stardock, who chairs the Public uh, Homeland Safety Committee, uh, is here. It's a testament of that. And then, of course, with State Representative Ron Reynolds and State Representative Alma Allen, uh, it means just, you know, the significance, not just to this district, uh, but the, to the entire city. I do want to acknowledge uh, former Chief McClellan for being here, uh, because it started under his leadership. Thank you, Judge Chief McClellan. And then, certainly, I cannot say enough uh, for Chief Acevedo, uh, who has just been here now a little more than a year. But let me tell you, just has done an awesome, 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 awesome job. 
And then this command staff, the entire command staff, uh, doing yeoman work, yeoman work for the city of Houston. Uh, our number one priority, number one priority, is the public safety of the people in this city. That's our number one priority. Uh, you can have parks and everything else, but if you don't feel safe, you're not going to be in the parks. And if you don't feel safe, you're not going to be going back and forth to your neighborhoods or retail. So public safety is our number one concern. And I just want to be brief because Councilmember Green has pretty much laid it out. I just want to say thank you to him. Thank you to all of the, thank you to you, okay? Because quite frankly, it all starts and stops with you. And uh, we, we are your employees, every single one of us. We are employees of every civic group, every voter, every property owner, every person who lives in the district. We are your employees. And you have the right to hire and fire us. And so, um, and so it's important for us to do things that are in your best interest, that meet your needs and facilities of this kind. Uh, demonstrates that public safety is still very much a high priority, that these men and women in blue need the facilities and the equipment to do their jobs for you and the rest of us. And I just want to thank uh, former Mayor Anise Parker, everyone over the last six years that have worked to make this day possible. Now, I know it's extremely warm. <laughs> So I'm going to put this hat right back on my head in honor of the Houston Astros, but it's got the city's logo. But this is a great day for the city of Houston. Thank you all so very much. That's right. And can I get my, uh, my storefront officers, my officers that work out of the Westbury storefront, and the Hiram Clark stuff, if they could just raise their hand. Y'all, let me tell you, you talk about community beliefs in chief. These guys are in our schools, they're in our neighborhoods, they do great work, and so I just wanted to make sure we uh, appreciate them. So at this time, we will bring up our, the best police chief, <laughs> but he can't play basketball, y'all, and tonight he's gonna, we're going to show him how there's a council game tonight. So. Chief Art Arcevedo, let's give him a round of applause. All right. Good morning. Good morning. What a great morning. Let me just say, you mentioned basketball. It's going to be, we're going to get it on tonight, okay? Let me tell you something. We're the Houston Police Department. We don't come second to nobody. And when you said you got the best mayor, if you got the best mayor in the state, in the country, in the, in, in the world, we got to bring him the trophy, the rock, tonight. So uh, thank God they have a doctor who's a pretty good chiropractor on your teams. You're going to need it after this game. So make sure you bring a bench. They think I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, I actually warmed up the other day, played for two hours. But, uh, I can't wait. But anyway, I digress. My mind is on basketball. It really is. And by the way, there will be police officers checking for city IDs. Don't be bringing any ringers. Because they will be arrested for impersonating a, a, a government employee. And the council will be arrested for facilitating that crime. So we want to see the real McCoy. Anyway, good morning, everybody. I, I digress because, again, my mind is on basketball. But welcome to Southwest. Is this a great day or what? I mean, what a morning to be here. You know what? God is good. And the, and the mayor talks about God and we're a community of faith. And by the way, Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Happy holidays, everybody. What a time to open up this station this morning. When I got here last year, when my mayor brought me, I, I went I went to Beach Nut, and I said, Holy Jesus, where have I ended up? I mean, that place, it should have been, con it, it should have been condemned. I'm talking about the station. I mean, our poor tack people were living in a trailer. It was a station that probably outlived its youthfulness for many, many years. And you know what? Uh, Bill Bratton always used to say, cops count, cops count. And they really do count. And what we've sent as a community, a message to our police officers, and we invest in this, what we're saying is we're acknowledging their work. What we're saying is that we're acknowledging that they matter, that they make a difference. And, and if you look at the, at the joy of these officers that went from, uh, and by the way, God is good because he helped us by bringing Harvey to that station, kind of flooded it out, right? He said, you won't be needing that anymore. And, and I want you to think about Harvey. These men and women, their cars flooded. 
Their station flooded, and guess what? Not one of them went home. Not one of them complained. They came to work 24-7 for over six days to keep this committee safe. And so the least we can do is invest in them. And then uh, Joe Turner, who I got the opportunity to visit with when I first got here, Mayor, you know, it, we, are, we are different departments, but we're one municipal family. And without his cooperation saying, hey, you know what, we've got this park. You know, it's kind of isolated, so we'd like to build, build a partnership, and he gives us the land. I mean, that's what partnership is about. So I don't, he's not here. He's in New Bronzeville. Let's give it up for Joe Turner and the Parks Department. Because what we're doing here is this is about relational policing, and what a better place to put a police station than in the middle of a park with a community room for the community so we can build relationships of trust. By the way, let's give it up for our school band over here real quick. Were they fantastic? Our cheerleaders. And bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? It's too late, we're coming for them. Uh, but let me just say this to the community, uh, it's really important. Uh, Councilman Green got it right. This is more centralized. It doesn't matter where we're housed because policing isn't about location, it's about attitude. Policing isn't about where you're stationed. Policing is about heart. And what I love about this police department is that we know that our city, because of this thing that I think we call it the revenue cap, you know, think about that, we are cash strapped, artificially cash strapped. Because if you think this facility, we have other facilities, and it's not just a police department. There's so many needs. And you see that by the time we make a decision, it still takes six years to get it done. And I'm just hopeful and, and in prayer that we've already, thanks to our mayor and council, we took care of pensions. That's a big one. Let's give them a big hand, which has created some solvency. We just, thanks to the taxpayers, we built this. I think this is a 2012 bond, my recollection is when I was told. I'm not, is that about right? 2012 bonds that you passed. You just passed some more bonds. We're going to start getting our fleet in order. But I think when you're the fastest growing city in the country, we really need to think about how do we how do we bring in that cash flow so we can actually get the things that this community so desperately needs and so richly deserves. And I'm hopeful that by November of eight, eight, uh, 18 that we'll get rid of that part, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Uh, because I know the need. Every morning when I wake up, I, I, I get to see what's going on in our city, and there's still a lot of needs from, in terms of public safety. And when you call 911, you want police there now. When a tree falls in your street, you want the road department there now, but that costs money, and I'm hopeful that we can change that. The last thing I want to say so we can move on with this is thank you. Thank you to Mayor Turner. Thank you, Chief McClellan. Thank you to the council. But most importantly, thank you to the taxpayer that sees the value in investing in their government, investing in their community. Thank you, Joe Turner, for giving us this land. This is a beginning. Let's do relational policing. And thank you, Mayor, for the privilege of being your chief. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Thank you all. Make sure I'll hack him tonight. <laughs> Uh, next, we're going to bring up uh, a son of the community, uh, graduate of uh, Madison High School. Who's That's right, Madison High School. Risen to the ranks of Sister Chief, or Chief. Uh, let's hear, give it up for Chief Troy Finner. You know, whenever you got to follow our mayor and our chief, I said, wow. You know, but uh, this is my community. And I look around and I see this facility and I say, wow, wow. Because 28 years ago, I started out at Beach Nut Substation and spent many years there as a police officer, as a sergeant, and it was just not a good place to work. <laughs> you look at the eyes of these men and women on our police department that deserve much more. Thank God that this is here. Thank God for two administrations. You look at the challenges that we have financially in our city with this budget and they made it happen and I want to thank everybody. She said one thing about relation, relationship policing. When we designed this thing I was so glad they got a beautiful park. Kids and families are in that park but what's more important look at this big beautiful community room. This is a facility for our community because it's not about our administration and at the top, the chiefs and whatnot. It's about those men and women that come out here every day and every night in patrol to keep us safe. 
And it's about bringing everybody together. And it's a beautiful thing. And I'm so, so excited. I'm almost in tears. Thank y'all so much. This facility is going to bring us closer together. And for my 15 district people, I love you guys. We're going to be there for you. We're going to be there for you. And this is your home as well. So it is a community facility for the city, but most importantly for 15 and 16 district. And it's going to serve you guys well. I want to say something and bring up my partner, Matt Slinkert, Executive Assistant Chief. There, this guy is an administrative genius. And behind the scenes of everything that's going, on, that's going on, Matt Slinkert is somewhere putting those numbers together, organizing things. And if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here today because Matt's group oversees and still all our facilities with HPD. And he's also oversees all our investigative and our support. So I just want to say thank you, Matt, and, and I just love being a partner with you, Matt. Thank you so much. But look, it's cold out here, and I'm going to get out the way, but thank y'all. I'm so happy today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Troy. And, um, you know, I, I love that guy to death, and um, I couldn't think of a, of a better man to be partners with. And we truly are partners, and uh, we collaborate every single day under Chief Acevedo's leadership. And uh, we truly are a team, and we always have what's best uh, for the community at, at our heart, and, and really it's what drives us. Um, I'll be very brief. Um, no need to repeat what's already been said, but I do want to give thanks um, to another man who was very, very instrumental in this project. And Councilmember Green was correct. We've had a lot of meetings about this over the years. And Donald, where are you? Donald? Okay. Donald? All right. Uh, Donald and I have sent countless emails for years and meetings and talks to make sure that we were going to be here one day. And it's just nice to finally see this because I've seen it on paper for so many years. But the other person that I want to give uh, credit to, uh, uh, three other people real quick, um, retired Sergeant Steve Hanner. Reti retired Sergeant Steve Hanner, who has done so much work over the years uh, regarding our facilities. He's not here with us, but he's here, uh, obviously, in our hearts. He's off somewhere enjoying life. And so a round of applause for Sergeant Steve Hanner. One of my staff that is instrumental and has taken up the ball when Sergeant Steve Hanner retired and has really worked tirelessly on making sure that we finish strong on this project. Um, uh, Sergeant Jim Hudkins, wave your, wave your hand back there. And, and lastly, um, under Chief McClellan's leadership, um, retired Executive Assistant Chief Kirk Munden used to be in charge of all of our facilities and operations as an ancillary project. Let's remember he had you know other responsibilities like I do. He was over you know investigations and police work, but. We always task somebody to be in charge of our facilities, right? When you exist in over 100 facilities throughout the city, there's always a pipe breaking somewhere. There's always a water leak somewhere. Everybody always needs something. Well, right before he was ready to retire, Chief McClellan, under his wisdom, said that Kirk Munden had been doing those facility issues for so long that Kirk needed to pass that baton to somebody. And uh, Chief McClellan said, Matt, that's you. So... <laughs> So I had the pleasure and privilege uh, for about a year before he retired working with Executive Assistant Chief Kirk Munden, getting up to speed on all of our capital improvement projects, all of our facilities, the design work, everything. And this was the first project that Kirk and I did together. And unfortunately, as, as many of you know, um, shortly after his retirement, um, Kirk tragically passed away. And so, but he is with us here in spirit. We wouldn't be here either if it wasn't for Executive Chief uh, Executive Assistant Chief Kirk Munden, and so we really appreciate his efforts. And so, just thanks, and thanks for letting me be a part of this. Thanks. And Chief, thank you for mentioning uh, Kirk Munden, because whenever I had to go do a pitch about this station to the mayor, trying to get this thing on the ballot, I bring in uh, Chief Munden with me. You know, it's very difficult to say no to him. So uh, uh, he really uh, worked with us, and we appreciate that. 
so as I, uh, I wrap up this occasion, first of all, let me just uh, uh, let you guys give an acknowledgement to my staff who's done a tremendous job for the past five years working and going to meetings. Ms. Martha Castex Tatum, Ms. Barbara Hyde, Dr. Donald Perkins, the Dream Team, Green Dream Team. I tell you, they make it happen. And so we really appreciate them. Uh, every week there was, a, there was a meeting. We were there. We wanted to make sure that our neighborhoods uh, were okay. We wanted to make sure that our park was still operating. We wanted to make sure that the construction team uh, was on point. And where are our construction team? Our construction, they're in the back turning. Let's give them a round of applause, Manhattan. As well as our architects. Where are the architects? Daniel. Where's Daniel? There we are. Let's give them a round of applause. They did a phenomenal job. And what you don't see is you, there will be an art installation that will, uh, we tried to have it ready for today. Something came up, but we will have art that will be right up front here, very colorful, will really wake up uh, the park, as well as in the community room. Uh, there will be scenes from the community uh, in the community room, and so that art installation will be coming uh, to spruce up um, the area. And so I want to mention that the public facility, again, as uh, Chief Finner says, belongs to the community. The new 50,000 square foot HPD facility will have a 112 seat capacity public community meeting room to allow for the community functions to function at, well, to have community function at the substation. This will include an ideal location for both Westbury, Southwest PIP, and Hiram Clark Fort Bend Houston PIP meetings. Just like South Gessner HPD substation in the Braze Oaks area, the large community room will also serve as a meeting venue for regularly scheduled civic association meetings. So all of y'all civic clubs, you got a place to meet. And uh, before I invite Chaplain Monty Montgomery to provide the benediction for this occasion, I want to remind everyone that once a complete tour of the substation, to please go inside the community room followed by this ribbon cutting. HVD staff will divide everyone into small groups to make the tour manageable. Also, refreshments are being served in the community room, courtesy of the HPD command staff and the District K Council office. After Chaplain Montgomery remarks, I will ask that the Parker Elementary Magnet students play a se selection as we gather for the ceremonial ribbon cutting photo op. At this time, I'd like to bring up Chaplain Montgomery. Listen, after 12 years being the chaplain for this department, I've seen a lot of great things happen, haven't you? Amen. And I'll agree, we have the greatest of leaders in this department. Chief, nothing, Chief McClellan, nothing against you. You're my chief, right? <laughs> so, but I tell you, we do have great leaders now, and I want to tell you one thing. They trust in a great God as wisdom for them. And I, I, I love that. I appreciate that. So what the word says is this, that all good things come from a good father. This is a great thing, and I believe it comes from him. For you, the community, I'll ask you this. As the chaplain of this department, would you promise to come with, together with me as a partnership of prayer warriors for our officers that work in this district and all over the city? We need people praying every single day because of what has been happening in this country. We have officers that go down every single day, all over. We've been blessed here. And I want you to know that, been blessed. You pray uh, for them, if you would, every day. 